Reconnection successful. All right, now can I go to Twitch? Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, it says I've been live for 16 seconds. Yeah, I have seconds. no idea. Yeah, it says I've been live for... All right, let's mute that before I get infinite echoes right now. Um... Huh. So, does that mean I have, like, a VOD from before? Because I was forced to end there for a moment? Yeah, we have that one, and now we have this one that is currently 31 seconds old and counting up. Even though my OBS is showing, like, two and a half hours. Hmm... So this is going to be super weird and awkward then. Because I was in the middle of this set. And now I have to split up that VOD and start with this one. So... Alright. So if you're watching this as the VOD on YouTube, this is probably super weird. Because I had one thing just end randomly in the middle of it. Because... Uh, we disconnected from, I think Twitch had a meltdown or something, because Twitch was not loading. So, we got cut off somewhere in the middle of me doing this particular Commander set. I forget which one we're even on right now. Uh, Commander 2019. So, we were like half an hour away from when I was planning on stopping, so I guess we'll pick up here. But yeah, I got cut off somewhere around like... Geist, Ca Geist Caller or Archfiend of Spite or something. So, none of these cards are making it. I think I mused over Curse of Fool's Wisdom, but that one wasn't going to get in either. Um, so yeah, this, this is throwing me off a bit, but we'll keep going. Uh, don't need Gift of Doom. Don't need Carrick, because black is our tertiary color. So even though... The life payments are certainly reasonable. Um, we're not going to cast enough black spells to get him counters. And we don't need the ability to pay life for our black spells because we're not going to have enough where we trading life for mana is going to be useful in that regard. Uh, probably don't need Nightmare on Making... Leaving Amalgam, Apex Altasaur, Populate X times, no. Crossfang, no. Turn, Eulogist. And step, each player creates a 1 1 green plant token. Whenever a creature token dies, put a 1 1 counter on Grismold, no. Aeon Engine, no. Blade, no. Put a land from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. Reach on target land from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Eight, Sanctum of Eternity. Nope, don't think so. Okay, so that was 2019. because we need to 2020 or 2021 because commander 2020 was one of the ones that they named after the set it was associated with rather than okay, let's add this in all oh, right this is another one that doesn't like to Function properly, so we are white, black, green, and we need Commander 20. Yeah, there we go. Er, 
player attacks one or more opponents if that opponent has more life than another of your opponents the attacking player draws a card and you put two one one counters on a creature you can now flying mentor Control dies if it had counters on it. <clears throat> uh, beginning of your end step, create a food token equal to the number of non-token creatures you had enter the battlefield under your control this turn. Sacrifice a food, target creature gains indestructible. Uh, choose another target creature, put a number of 1-1 counters on it equal to the amount of life you gain this turn or the amount of life you've lost this turn, whichever is greater. Yeah, I don't need to put a ton of counters on my thing, so. Uh, Angel of the Ruins is 7 mana, so while it can exile uh, multiple artifacts and enchantments, and it has plane cycling, gotta be honest, not super feeling that one. Um, yeah, I don't care about the map. I will strike Ward 2. No. Can't attack you or planeswalkers you control, attacks your opponent. Attacking player creates a tapped inkling. That's an artifact spell, pay two. Destroy target non land permits, controller makes two treasures. No. Particularly choose an opponent, you and target permanent, you control each game protection from the chosen player until end of turn. Uh a shield, monologue tax. For each player, oh right, this guy. No, uh, promise of loyalty. No, no, uh, no. The author. I don't think so with Blight Mound. Like, having our creatures die into 1-1s that die to gain us a life is not terrible, but I think we can do better. Uh, one or more counters, no. Rhetoric, no. Each creature gets minus X, minus X. That'll just kill all of our stuff, so no. Um, go to Fane. Technique, a keen duelist. Um, don't think we need Bloodcaster. Uh, beginning of your end step, if you gain life this turn, you may pay X life to make an XX demon. No, not really what we're about. Uh, whenever you gain life, you may pay black to return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. That one I might be interested in. It says Vain Witch Coven. Bane Witch was all one word, right? Then it's two and a black. They're a vampire warlock. We're a three three. Got the green cards. Uh, tax gain two life, then plus X plus X and trample. No. Creature spells cost X less, where X is the amount of life I gain this turn. Tap gain two. Yeah, by the time we hit that guy, that shouldn't be a huge issue, so. Don't need fractal harvest. Or harness, rather. I don't need fractal harvest either, but I don't think that's a real card, so. Probably a good thing we don't need it. Uh, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. You gain life equal to that card's mana value. Exile healing technique. Paradox zone. Infestation. Judge garden. I think I need the sprout back trudge either. Gardener, no. prevent all combat damage will be dealt to you this turn. For each one damage prevented, create a 2-1 Inkling token. Maybe? Especially since if the opponent tries to play around us, um, 
you know, having a way to exile their creatures that are attacking us if they, you know, attack with, like, one creature to play around, uh, settle the wreckage or the angel, and it's just one huge creature, we get to get them with the ink shield and just make, like, that many two ones, and then we have all these creatures. Uh, let's see. For each permanent type, return up to one card that type from your graveyard to the battlefield. You lose three life for each card. Return this way, then exile revival experiment. It's okay. We don't have ways to set up the card, so it's just whatever went to the graveyard naturally. So. Um, like, Ink Shield is a minor maid. Still five mana. Yeah, probably not. I was hoping for a few more cards from that set. Just because... Here, we can close that out now. Just because they have the life gain sub-theme from Witherbloom, but apparently not. <clears throat> All right. That was Commander 2021. Apologies. Collection Commander Legends. I think this helps. As then we don't get the cards from the commanders. Um, decks that went along with this until the very end that are reprints, so. Don't. Valor. Not choose a color. Protection from that color. No. I think that worked. I'm having trouble remembering how many of these cards are actually in the Commander Legends set, like in the booster packs as opposed to the Commander decks. I think some of these might have been, but I can't remember clearly. I don't need Tangi's Lieutenant, Kinsbell Courier, this Palace Sentinels. the strong like I don't remember Slith Ascendant being in the commander like draft packs but it's been so long I might have just forgotten it also none of the legends show up they're like grouped separately then yeah this one's kind of weird I don't know if this worked or not. I feel like everything's like completely out of order now. Sonic Lore, no. Doomsayer, no. Huntmaster. Beast of Succession, no. Uh, whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, loses one life and you gain one life, no. Right of the Perfect, Revenant, Bow. I guess if it groups all the legends last, then this makes sense, but. Uh, Bowmaster. Skate, Destroy Target, Artifact, or Enchantment. No. Silverback Shaman, Wildness, ooh, excuse me, Diamond, alright, let's see if all of the legends get grouped together after the artifacts, Duity Engine, Maelstrom Colossus, Stone Oracle, 
Throne Guard. Timely Ward. Yeah, this feels like super weird because now we just have Timely Ward randomly after the land. And then. But then we've got, like, Elder Deep Fiend was almost definitely in the Commander decks and not the thing that. Yeah, this is all. All kinds of messed up now. Um, so it had Flash if it targets a Commander, gives Indestructible. No. I need Stump Squall. Yeah, everything's all mixed up now. That did not work the way I wanted it to. Trend unquestioned authority, valorous stance. East within, eternal witness. Any of these so far? Or they're all reprints. A bunch of land that's definitely from the commander decks. Yeah, I don't know what exactly the thought process was in reorganizing things when I clicked on this, but it did not work out the way I had hoped. Or even close to it. Like, this is not even kind of reasonable. Hey, okay, here are the commanders, maybe. Possibly. Uh, Tevish Sazat. No. A whole bunch of reprint commanders. This guy. Then there are the commander cards. Okay, here are all the commanders, hopefully. Uh, Chroma. Yeah, aside from giving all of our stuff lifelink, I really don't care. Oh no, this one gives plus one, plus one if it has the keywords. So... Yeah, she doesn't even give lifelink. She gives plus one, plus one instead, if they have it. Uh, 1-1 one, one counter each of up to two target creatures. Dies, great. 1-1 one, one spirit, no. Equipment, no. Counter on it, no. Choose another target creature. Its controller may exile it with an Aegis counter on it. Two white tap sack. I'm sorry, not even sack. Just return all exiled cards with Aegis counters on them to the battlefield under their owner's control. Uh, as long as it's your turn, creature tokens get plus one, plus four. No. The Radiant, no back. Armix, Medicine Death Touch, no. Skit, not Elves. Uh, we're not really tokens either. Uh, whenever another player loses the game, you gain life. Yeah, that's silly, but it's not realistic in this deck. We're not even actively trying to kill our opponents, so. Uh, commanders you control have indestructible. I uh, don't need her. A2, no. Techic. All. Kodama the East Tree. Uh, Slurk. Domination, Bell Bay. Uh, or another creature you control dies, return up to one target creature with lesser toughness. Uh, for each one more counter. No. Lifelink. At the beginning of each end step, if you gain life this turn, distribute up to that many 1-1 one -one counters among any number of other target creatures. That's the problem. All of these 1-1 one -one counter things are for, or all these life gain things are for making our creatures better. I just want to gain even more life, or do something that helps me not die even more than gaining a ton of life did. I don't think we need Lysa. I mean, she's fine. And making it so that our opponents can't cast spells comfortably. But, you know, she makes them lose life a few times when they cast spells and then she dies. That's the end of it, so. Probably not going to bother. Uh, X is the number of tokens you 
you created this turn, rather. No. Chroma's Will, Archon of Coronation, Sky Hunter, Court of Grace, Generous Gift. That's where Generous Gift first showed up, or was it? It was Modern Horizons, right? Yeah. Order of the Accord. Uh, if that player controls more creatures than you, make a 1 1. If player controls more lands than you, search your library for a basic plane. Uh, exile it to begin each end step. If you control no creatures, sacrifice this. Return all exiled to the battlefield under your control. Uh, attacks. Play with the most life. Make a 4-4. Four, four. Do not need the soul of eternity. As hilarious as its power and toughness are. I don't need a creature with that big A backside. To block for me and attacking with it is kind of contrary to my stated goals of how I want to win this game, so. Uh, return all artifact enchantment and planeswalker cards. No. I don't need the court. Red Lord, no. Necrotic Hex, no. Great Harvester, no. Opposition Agent. Or Sazat's will. Sorry, not Sazat's Tom. Sazat. As in Tevish Sazat. Wrong, wrong fantasy setting. Um, creature of the Grace Power Exile. Show your commander create a token that's a copy of Bio Waste Blob. No. Apex Devaster. Court of Bounty. Blade. Regent, Paul's Will, Magus of the Order, I'm search your library for 10 lands, put them onto the battlefield tapped, I think so, Weaver Druid, no, Sweet Gum Recluse, no, Ender Plate, I don't need pro blue and red. Eisenstone, Stone, Jewel Lotus, Triniform, Staff of Domination. Okay, so that was incredibly awkward the way it reorganized everything. Did not help at all. So I need to go back here. All right, we'll do the Commander Legends Baldur's Gate, and then I think that'll do it for now. We're coming up on the three-hour mark, so although obviously the last hour-long thing got really messed up by uh, Twitch going down for a hot minute, so... All right, we'll just leave the cards in the order that they're in and see how that goes for me, because apparently that's slightly better at this point. Um, exile any number of other non-land permits you control until he leaves the battlefield and create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token for each permanent exile this way. Hmm. So we could exile like a whole bunch of things that aren't um like my gain life whenever things come into play and then when he goes like first of all we would get to gain all of the life from all the new tokens coming in but then when he goes we would get back all of the other stuff and then gain more life ideally That's still, like, we don't have control over when he dies. But he does get to protect some of our stuff that we already got value out of from Wrath Effects. 
Like, we can hide it under him until he dies, and in the meantime, we have a whole bunch of uh, one ones to do stuff with. It doesn't help if we're getting, like, attacked in the air, but other than that, like, him being on the ground means that anything on the ground, he just jumps in front of when we're ready for him to die. Or we get rid of him ourselves, but we're probably exiling him because of the way I'm building the deck, so. It seems okay at best. Uh, I don't need Agent of the Iron Throne. Agent of the Shadow Thieves either. Altar of Ball. Ancient Brass Dragon. I think so. Don't need the bronze. Don't think I need the gold either. Yeah. Uh, Archivist of Ogma. Whenever an opponent searches their library, you gain one life and draw a card. Hmm. It's okay. Not amazing. Archpriest of Iona. Armor of Shadows. Arms of Star. Send from Avernus. Six mana, death touch, life laying. Target opponent loses life equal to the amount of life they lost this turn. You gain life equal to the amount of life you gain this turn. That's very, very tempting to just gain an arbitrarily huge amount of life, potentially. Alright, we'll consider Asterion. Uh... Oh yeah, we didn't add anything from the previous thing, so... From Commander Legend, so we are just on Baldur's Gate. Hey, right. That kind of took me... aback for a second. I was so surprised we didn't wind up with anything... Despite the fact that I just went over the list. I was very distracted by the way the list presented itself when I tried to reorganize it. That I did not notice we didn't actually wind up with anything. Vampire, Elf, Rogue. Okay. Elf. Rogue. A 4-4 four, four base. Nation. No, I don't think so. We're not planning to be the attacker most of the time. Don't need the experiment. I don't think we need Baba La Saga either. It's the Guardian Naga if we want it. Which we might. Actually, are we going to run it though? We already have the one thing that exiles and... It's five mana, hits two things. We're probably not running the other thing that can hit two things. Because we have to cast it on our turn, but maybe. Yeah, we're probably not going to have room for the Naga at that point. It's just going to be a waste of time putting that whole thing on the list. Like the front half and the adventure half. Other... No, don't need banishment. Barroom Brawl, no. <clears throat> Battle Angels of Tear, no. Um, creatures attacking the last chosen player get plus one power, no. Uh, create a treasure, lose a life. Draw a card, lose two life. Make a 3-2, lose three life. This is probably still worth it. If we're gaining as much life as I want to be gaining, also, one of the most likely things to gain us life will be creatures coming into play, or dying, or both. So, um, paying 3 life for a 3-2 might not even cost me any life. You know, I will consider black market connections. This is what I was going to say, this is from the commander deck. There's one thing I do appreciate the way they arrange this is 
You'll notice that this does not have a border on the artwork. It's a little hard to notice, except like by this little window or whatever it is over here that's creating the bright spot. But they use the fancy artwork from all of the Commander Deck exclusive cards from these sets when they do it this way. So at least that way I know it's from the Commander Deck and not from uh, the main set. Market options. Route flying gains flying until end of turn. Uh, destroy all creatures. Make a tap treasure for each creature. No. Don't need the altar of ball or its skeleton or its other thing. <coughs> Uh, beginning of your end step, exile the top card of each opponent's library. Play cards as long as they remain exiled. Yeah, I don't need that. Full Sovereign reprint. Bronze Walrus. Uh, whenever it attacks, defending player loses X life and you make X treasures. No. Combat damage to a player. For each token you control, make a 1-1 white rabbit creature token. Don't think so. Calculating Lich now, Call to the Void. You create a 2 2 boar token that's tapped and attacking. No. Campfire. Diamond. Dragon at all. Circle of the Land Druid now. Gates. Unless I'm forgetting a gate that would be super relevant to this deck. Uh, if you control a creature, or I'm sorry, if you if a creature card was put into your graveyard from anywhere this turn. Yeah, I don't know where I was going. Like my brain was trying to auto correct to what it thought it was, and that wasn't even close. Um, ever want more tokens under the battlefield under your control? No. Cloud kill? No. Exile target creature, then roll a d20. This one is tempting, but we we'll probably have better options. It is an instant, though, so I guess I will consider it. And livestock. One in a white and an instant. Okay. Hey. Criminal pass. Plus X plus O, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. No. Uh, cultists of the Absolute, no. Each opponent draws a card, then you draw a card for each opponent that drew a card this way. I think we need that. Plus to Dawn again. Deep Gnome Terramancer. Uh, enter the battlefield under opponent's control without being played. You may search your library for planes. It's only once per turn. I don't know why that one's restricted to once per turn. Like, if they're going to play all these extra lands, you should be able to get all these extra lands, too. Because at that point, if anybody else wants to play lots of extra lands, like, does that matter anymore? Because you already got so many extra lands, like, if you get, like, the last two planes out of your deck, they need to get caught up regardless, so they're going to search out all of theirs. So, it, basically, if one player is searching for all of these extra lands, you also get to do it, and if they're not doing it, then 
you know, you don't get anything. So it only really negatively impacts the players that don't ramp by land searching. And then it only negatively impacts them in that you got to ramp. So instead of you being a ramp deck, you had to rely on somebody else being a ramp deck. It seems kind of weird to care about that effect being once per turn when it's contingent on opponents doing the thing. Like, you can't really force other players to put extra lands into play most of the time. I'm sure there's a card or two, if I could think of it. Like, I forget if you can flicker your opponent's lands with the one spirit from World Wake, but maybe something like that. And even then, you have to keep untapping that guy, so... The top four cards of your library you may exile a creature card from among them. And the rest on the bottom, for as long as that card remains exiled, you may cast it, and it has Undaunted. He has to attack to do that. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't need Earthquake Giant, or Earthquake Giant, Earthquake Dragon, um, Elder Brain, Eldritch Pact. X is the number of cards in their graveyard. Yeah, still probably not. Uh, we're not making tokens, so we don't need Busybody. Return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield and choose a background. Nope. Uh, for two basic land cards and or gates, put them on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle, take the initiative. Yeah, that's true. I need to double check the initiative, make sure that dungeon isn't good for our deck in some way. I'm assuming not, but... Especially since I don't think we really attack. But if we can keep triggering the uh, exploration of the dungeon, then maybe. Yeah, Far Traveler is just way worse than either Teleportation Circle or Conjurer's Closet. Alright, that's her again. Every time I see her in this set... I keep not realizing at first she's the one we just saw in the commander decks. Because I'm not expecting that card to be in the Baldur's Gate set. Whenever this creature attacks against Double Strike, no. Uh, cast a spell that shares a creature type, no. We will have some number of halflings, but not nearly enough. Praying line. I <clears throat> eh, don't need from the catacombs. Sleep death tyrant. Yeah, that's not really a thing we need. Stop all creatures you don't control. No. Giant Ankeg. Uh, beginner at step, choose a player. They put two 1-1 one, one counters on a creature they control. Choose a second player to draw a card, then choose a third player to create two treasure tokens. Nope. Slime. Really need that. Destroy target creature with power four greater and scry two. No. Prowler. Artwork guilt feeder. Target token becomes a four four bear. Don't think so. Trap up to one target creature that player controls. Uh, whenever this creature attacks a player. The top four cards. Don't think so. Uh, becomes tapped. Share a creature type. Nope. Gate. No. Row. 
Valhalla, Hornet Queen, Hunted Horror. Mr. Battlefield X up to one target non warrior, return it to the battlefield. No. The creatures you own have creature tokens, get plus two plus two. Yeah, I don't need the intellect devour. Uh, regular cohort. Orbs. Tokens I control have tap add green. Search your library for up to X basic lands, where X is the number of creatures attacking you. Put those cards onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Prevent all combat damage will be dealt this turn. Uh, yeah, we don't need Journey to the Lost City. It's really weird and wonky. And not anything our deck would particularly like. Don't need Saga. Thomas Reach. Uh, we'll put counters. Uh, put that many plus one. Exile all non-token creatures you control, then roll a d20. Return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control, then exile them again. Return them their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step, so. Saves all of my non-token creatures from a wrath effect, including an exile effect, and we might get double triggers. Yeah, okay. I do like that one just enough to consider it, so. Oh, we are still under Baldur's Gate. Right. So how do you spell our name again? L-A-E. Apostrophe, Z E L. Go back. Just three and a white for an instant. I say I hope it's an instant. If I misread that sorcery as an instant, I would be very disappointed in myself, because now the card is terrible. At least for what I'm planning on doing with it. Uh, creatures you control have myriad. That is a hilarious effect if I just want to gain a billion life all of a sudden. It's like, okay, all of my stuff attacks. For every opponent, I get another copy of it, and all of these things will trigger all of these times. But yeah, I don't think we need that. As silly as it would be, it's not actually good. Don't need Majestic Genesis. Duo Drone. This. Root. Uh, enters the battlefield with additional 1 1 counter on another creature you control. Enter the battlefield with additional counters. Nope. Alright, that's the guy from Battle Bond. Ward X, where X is the number of experience counters you have. If permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, get an experience counter. Creatures you control get plus one power for each experience you have. I think so. Don't need the Bardic. Bilbo's... Oh, he is a rogue. Um, Death Touch if you control a rogue. Not particularly good, but he is actually a rogue, so that might be worth remembering. Oh, hey, it's Miracle. <clears throat> Why do we just jam Miracle in this deck while we're at it? Uh, mostly because he'll never be indestructible. Um, and also he's exiling my stuff, so... No, never mind, Miracle. You may not make it into the deck. It's okay, he's got a whole other commander deck I built around him. He's fine. Uh, Psychic Blades, no. Sure, Sacrifice is a creature. There's power. Nope. 
library, no. Autoloid ship, no. Various M. Schematics. Uh, enters the battlefield at the beginning of your upkeep. Each player may put two 1 1 counters on a creature they control. For each opponent who does, you gain protection from that player until your next turn. A overwhelming encounter. <clears throat> Albear Cub, I don't think so. Shepherd, no. Yeah, no, don't need the packed weapon. It's just no. I think we need the seer, but still haven't found the thing for the dungeon. Double check what it does. Game for your NSEP. If a permit you control left the battlefield this turn, create a 1 1. Yeah, while well, we do plan on blinking stuff, a lot of it triggers at the end of my turn, so. I wouldn't have blinked something already for that to trigger. Pontiff play. Raised by giants. Commander creatures you own have base power and toughness 10 10 and are giants. So it's toughness rather than its power. You have the initiative double the toughness of each creature. Ravenloft Adventure, unless we're doing something. Exile target creature you control, then return to the battlefield under its owner's control. Exile target creature card from a graveyard until the end of your next turn, you may cast that card. Or three or six. No permits left the battlefield this turn. That player loses X life where X is his power. Eh. Uh, first time you would draw a card each turn for the top two, put one into your graveyard and the other back on top of your library, then draw a card. Battlefield, if an opponent controls more lands than you, search your library for a basic planes. Then choose a creature you control, then each opponent chooses a creature they control with equal or lesser power. If you chose a creature this way, exile each creature not chosen. Eh. And Dungeoneer is one of the initiative things. Uh, target attacking cleric, rogue, warrior, or wizard gains protection from creatures until end of turn. And it explores. Sewer Nemesis, Shadow Heart. So the number of creatures you control. Deals damage equal to its power to target creature with four. Elemental. On Earth, no. Uh, exile up to five target permanent cards from your graveyard and separate them into two piles. An opponent chooses one pile, that into your hand, and the other into your graveyard. I don't think we need stick together. Stone skin, summon dead. There's no caramel tools. Three visits. 
care about the scorpion dude hunter. Uh, for X basic lands where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Destructible. Graveyard, create a token that's a copy of this thing. Breakable creation, your seller sweep. Here's battlefield, take the initiative when you attack. If you or the player you're attacking has the initiative, create two one ones that are tapped and attacking. All right. So, secret entrance. Search your library for a basic land, put it into your hand. Two one one counters on target creature, scry two. Player loses five life, go target creature, create a treasure token, draw a card, make a 4-1 black skeleton with menace, and reveal the top ten cards. Yeah, none of these are anything our deck cares about, so we don't need any of the um, take the initiative cards. Fourth, turn soldier. No opponents, more life. No. Puzzle box. Iconia. Rock. Up. White plume. Good old Wilson. All of his random keyword soup. Uh, enters the battlefield during the declare attacker step. For each attacking creature, you may reselect which player or planeswalker that creature is attacking. Eh. Grand all combat damage will be dealt to you and creatures you control this turn, but it's five mana. Third creature gets plus five, plus five, and gains indestructible. All creatures your opponents control able to block that creature this turn do so. Yeah. Goes under attack. Creatures you control gain indestructible, or you and target opponent each draw two cards. I gotta be honest, we will have enough other things that grant my creatures indestructible that are either cheaper than this or have a way more relevant secondary ability than the strike a deal option. So I'm going to go with no on temple under attack. Uh, create X one, one soldiers. No. Okay. All right. So things got a little weird with the, um, odd getting cut because twitch went down so that is going to do it for me though for today so we'll work on bilbo again probably tomorrow and if i don't see you then i will see you next time have a good rest of your day thanks for watching